and pizza is a classic combination, but handcrafted beer and pizza from Wichita Brewing Company is a magic combination. Join me, Brett Hightower, as I explore wineries, breweries, and brew pubs on this episode of Untapped Kansas. Untapped, we talk a lot about beer, but there's so many exciting things happening with wine here in Kansas. And at Grace Hill Winery, they're doing their own thing and finding a lot of success. So if you've ever wondered about Kansas wines, Grace Hill Winery might actually be the place to start. Local, right here in Whitewater, Kansas, right on the outskirts of Wichita. And we're here with the incredible Jeff Salo, who's gonna tell us all about Grace Hill Winery. Yeah, so uh, we're uh, a local winery here. We're located just north of Wichita uh, in Whitewater, Kansas. And we've been around for 10 years now, and uh, we do it all here on site. We grow the grapes, uh, we age them, we bottle them, uh, the, whole, the whole deal from vine to wine. So we're growing a lot of local things. A lot of grapes will actually grow here in Kansas. And so we think it really gives you a nice uh, sort of reflection of uh, sort of like a little mini piece of culture almost when uh, you come out to our winery here. Yeah. So we make about 15 different uh, wines here, um, all sorts of different styles. So there's always something, you know, for people to find. And it can be kind of a really fun way to uh, sort of interact uh, with our locality here, kind of get a, an expression of what we can do. Um, so you can come out to the winery, we do tastings five days a week, and uh, yeah, um, kind of hang out here in our tasting room, uh, try all the different wines, and kind of uh, learn what we're all about here. Well, and you had alluded earlier to the fact that family vacations, your dad, it was always about traveling somewhere, and you guys got dragged to a bunch of different wineries, but now you have that here. So kind of a family thing as well. It's always been in your blood for you know lack of a better term. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so yeah, when when we uh, when we went on vacation as a kid, uh, you know, most people are going to beaches and the mountains or something. <laughs> we spent a lot of time in barrel rooms. Uh, being you know five or six, I thought it was terrifically boring. Um, but it was kind of uh, my dad's way to sort of connect with the local culture of where we were going to. You know, people go on vacation. They have all sorts of different ways to do it. That was kind of always our family way right. to do it. Um, and so I think here in Kansas, there wasn't necessarily that sort of uh, history or, you know, basically that outlet for that. And so I think that that kind of really inspired him to want to bring something like that here. Um, so in 2004, we started planting our first grapes here uh, at the winery and uh, basically kind of hobby got out of control. And then we were, had more grapes than we knew what to do with, started making wine out of them. Uh, we had more wine than we knew what to do with uh, at that point. And uh, so we started to kind of really make a go for it, opened the winery in 2008. Uh, pretty small, uh, about 1,000 bottles or so we did that first year. Okay. Uh, and we'll get up to about 50,000 bottles or so this year. So really grown it quite a bit, uh, but still kind of stayed, tried to stay true to uh, that, uh, you know, we're making things grown here, uh, right. kind of like being, like I said before, that rep representation of where we are at in the world. And it's not always about pushing the envelope like we talked about before, but it's more like e exploration. Mm -hmm. So with the wines that you guys have here, you said the Chamberson is actually one that's, it's a nice identity wine for you guys. So tell yeah, me a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to, Chamberson going to be uh, the state grape of Kansas uh, here as of 2019, uh, as far as red wines go. And uh, it, it's a nice representation of what we can do here in Kansas because uh, basically it'll grow here in Kansas. You know, we're not growing uh, Cabernet, Chardonnays, things like that. Uh, here we're growing stuff that we'll put up with our cold winters as well as our really hot summers. Uh, so it, it's a nice way of kind of showing what we can grow here and we can do, it's a really versatile grape uh, as well. Uh, we make it, uh, it's in probably 10 different wines that we have, but we make it in a dry style, which is what you're drinking here. Uh, this is our Juvenile Chamberson. So we have our cellar series, which is kind of our 
um, our premium uh, wines we do in really small batches. Um, so those are juvenile beef because these are from our, some of our younger plants. These planted 2014, 2015. So these are some of the first grapes actually that have come off of these vines. Okay. Uh, we have uh, another one of our cellar series, our old vine Chamberson. Uh, so those would be more of our older vines. So 07, 08, we planted uh, those vines. Uh, and so you get to kind of taste uh, the difference. You know, we, if you come to our, uh, our taste room here, you can taste the juvenile versus the old vine. Same grapes picked the same day, uh, just from different parts of the vineyard, okay. uh, from different aged vines. So you really kind of taste the representation uh, between, you know, your different types of uh, yeah. wines there. And that's what I think is really interesting because, you know, wine can seem kind of mysterious to a lot of people. And, and here I get the idea that it's like, hey, learn as much as you want. You know, we're going to show you, you know, what some different styles are. And, and it's not always that pathway you're on as far as where your taste buds are going and people like different things or whatever, but I, I, I get the idea that your wines are very accessible, you know, to, to the established wine connoisseur, to someone who's just kind of getting in, you know, to uh, trying different wines. Exactly, exactly, and that's kind of what we're going for here, you know, because uh, like I was saying, there's not a ton of wineries in Kansas, not necessarily something that's, you know, on the top of people's minds when uh, they think about Kansas, for sure. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be able, yeah, we want you to learn as much or as little about the wines as you want. You know, if, if you want to come out here and you want to, you know, see how we do, the, how we grow the grapes, how we make all the wine, the different nuances we have uh, between all those different wines, um, you can certainly do that. If you want to come out here and just, uh, you know, try a bunch of different wines and hang out on the patio and uh, do your thing that way, we're, we're happy to, you know, help you out with that uh, too. It just kind of bring in something fun and local and different uh, to our, our, our place in the world here. Well, and that's perfect. So let's go chat with Mike, head winemaker here at Grace Hill and learn a little bit more. So here we are in the heart and soul of the production area at Grace Hill with Mike, the cellar master. And uh, Mike, I'm seeing these barrels back here and I'm thinking, you guys are having some fun coming up with some new things here. Oh yeah, we are. Um, so this year especially, we ordered a lot of different barrels. So we're experimenting with some Eastern European oak this year um, and two types of hybrid barrels actually. So some have French oak heads with American oak staves and then others have every other stave is French oak and American oak. So really trying to give us some of that, you know, Midwest feel with a little, you know, California nuance, maybe. Um, awesome, so, and it's not about pushing the envelope per se, it's more just like you guys have the freedom to kind of do what you want, you know? Yeah, it's always a learning process out here. We haven't been here very long, and um, you know, we're still learning what works best for us. Um, what varietals to grow, what barrels to use, how to treat them once we get them to the production area as well. So a lot of experimenting with styles still to see what works best for us here. And what's the most fun for you in this process? Oh, most fun for me, um, it's just kind of being able to do whatever I want. I can uh, take wines out of the tank whenever I want, try them, um, lots of quality control. Um, but also just blending different sweetnesses, um, different varietals every year, and then experimenting with different oak barrels as well is fun. And so you guys get to kind of layer it too. So you learn something and then you, you tuck that knowledge away and then you think, hey, we've got these kind of grapes in now, or we've got these barrels that have a different profile to them. And let's, let's see what happens when we go this direction. That's gonna be exciting. Right, we're kind of always trying to rise the tide, I guess you could say. Um, so every year we get a little more baseline knowledge and then try to you know expand it a little more, see if we can do a little bit better um, than what we have in the past. Awesome, and this is what makes Kansas wine so exciting. Grace Hill Winery really pushing the envelope a little bit and what Kansas wines can be. If you want to see how amazing Kansas wines can be, come on out to Grace Hill Winery and see Jeff and Mike and the gang and have a taste for yourself. Cheers. And do this and say, I'm Mike, the cellar master. I'm Mike, the cellar master. Are you rolling? <laughs> I just forced I just forced him into an outtake, which is awesome because we have a